Hey guys, Katie Nolan here. The Garbage Time Podcast is coming your way in just a second. But first, today's pod is brought to you by producer Matt's Underpants. Yeah, they are. They're the sponsors of the podcast. <laughs> uh, listen, guys, Mac Weldon is who I'm here to talk to you about. They have been sponsoring the Garbage Time Podcast forever. They're the best. Okay. Um, they have super, super comfortable clothes that look awesome. Underwear, socks, shirts. Do they have hoodies? They do have hoodies. Tell me about them. They have the best hoodies. They're so comfortable. They fit. They fit like really well, guys. Like they're good on your shoulders and not like too tight in your legs. They look really good. Mm. Sweatpants. Um, they've got a lot of stuff. People should check out their website. All of the website. All of the whole website. Click um, around. Yeah, check Spend out the site time. map. Is that a thing? That is. Is there the a bottom. webmaster? That check out like their contact us policy. Yeah, they've, it's a great policy. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Uh, they, their products smell really good. I said they look good. They're versatile. You can wear them at the bar, at the gym, on a date, at what work. What was that second thing you said? I, I don't know. The it gym, says on the paper, the gym. Yeah, wow. gym, J-I-M. You can wear them if your name if, is Jim. Yeah, gyms are encouraged to wear them. Yeah, also good. Max and Weldon's. Yeah, of course. And, mm-hmm. you know, gyms, Max, Weldon's, and everybody else, they want you to be comfortable. So if you don't like your first pair, you can keep it and you still get a refund, no questions asked. Just go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off, which I, I don't like to stress these things a lot, but like that's a lot of money. That's quite that's a bit great. of money. That's great. Good yeah. for us and great for you. So go get 20% off using the promo code garbage time at checkout. That's M A C K W E L D O N dot com. Promo code garbage time, all one word, no spaces. Today's pod is also brought to you by producer Matt's bra. No, by, uh, <laughs> by SeatGeek. Uh, SeatGeek is always the first place I go to look for tickets to a game or concert. I have the SeatGeek app on my phone. It's amazing. I just used it the other day uh, to look at tickets for the Red Sox games. I don't know if you guys heard, but like, they're in the playoffs. Playoffs? Playoffs? Uh, everything about SeatGeek is designed to make life easier for sports and music fans. I use it all the time. I rave about this every time I talk about SeatGeek, but they do the price comparison for you by searching multiple ticket sites, and that makes sure you get the best possible deal. And then they rank tickets based on their value, not necessarily based on their price, so you just know you're not going to overpay for a bad seat, and you also know when you're getting like an absolute steal. Uh, best of all, you guys get $20, a $20 rebate off your first SeatGeek purchase. So to get that, uh, download the SeatGeek app, go to the settings tab and click add a promo code. Enter promo code K-A-T-I-E and SeatGeek will send you $20 after you've made your first ticket purchase. Download the SeatGeek app and enter promo code K-A-T-I-E today. Boom. Shall we pod? We shall. Producer Matt. Producer Katie. Yep, damn right. That's right. Here we go with the podcast. Here Welcome we in, everybody. Uh, we actually have a guest today. We do. Which we'll get to a little bit later. It's Derek Waters from Drunk yes. History, friend of the show, friend of the podcast. Um, Good dude. And I guess technically I'm now friend of his show Whoa. because I'm going to be on it. Holy shit. Yeah, so we had him here to do a segment for next week's Garbage Time television program, yep. but then figured since he was here, we should probably chat about uh, Drunk History and the episode of mine that we filmed because I'll tell you what, producer Matt, uh, I filmed a lot of things that air on TV and a lot of the time I'm like, Oh, this thing airs. At first, I wanted to watch every single thing I ever did that went on TV. Then you get to a point where it's like, this feels a little self-obsessed to be like, I'm a DVR, all of me, and watch me again. But you learn. Right. I assume. But now this, I'm horrified of because I haven't, I hadn't seen it. Right. And I hadn't remembered any of it because they get you <laughs> fucked up. And so normally I can be like, oh, I bet this happened. I hope they didn't use that. This, I'm like, I don't remember past the first hour they were there at my apartment filming with me. So I was like, what did I do? But uh, um, Derek showed it to me when he came here. Yes. And it turned out okay. Yeah. They do such a good job. Yeah, they really do an amazing job. That's like a gold mine of a concept, that show. That now I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. Wish I thought of that idea. Yeah. The concept is so simple, but the execution is so like thoughtful and well executed. And yeah. they get great people. And last night I went uh, I went to a panel on the show, um, and I it was just a bunch of us that have done it like Taryn Killam and stuff, Derek obviously, 
talking about the behind the scenes stuff and it was really interesting to hear their side of behind the scenes because it's technically two shoots. They do the shoot with the narrator. Narrator gets fucking drunk and tells the story and then they do the shoot with the actors who have to reenact your drunken talking and what I found out is that they take huge speakers on the set and just play your audio, the drunk person That's and so the funny. actors just like mimic what you're saying. So I was playing over the loudspeaker on a loop while Rob Riggle mouthed my drunk, yeah. <laughs> slurring, fake Teddy Roosevelt dialogue. It's the best. And it's funny, he, he was on the show this past week. And yeah, I didn't, know, didn't know he was right. in Drunk History on, in my episode. Yeah, and yeah, producer Matt was talking to him and he was like, hey, yeah, I play Teddy Roosevelt, which is the the star of my story. Yeah, I was like, oh, have you met Katie before? He was like, yeah, kind of, sort of. <laughs> I was on Cargo's Wild. And he was like, but I know her voice and her drunk speaking patterns pretty well. And he was like, don't worry, you didn't slur. And I'm like, yeah. really? Yeah. Because I, I mean, slur sober. That's that's like as ringing endorsement as you can get, I think. Yeah, I think so yeah. too. And I didn't puke until after they left. So count it. Yeah. I Got basically em. crushed it. I think yeah. my parents yeah. are going to be proud, question mark. They are. Um, uh, at this, anything else in host chat? Anything else you want to talk about? Should we talk about your theory? I have a theory. Okay, let's. I have a theory for the producer nation. Matt has a theory. We're in a safe space here, so we're gonna let him. Yeah. Offer it up. It's a hypo hy hypothesis. I think it's hypotenuse. Yeah, hypotenuse. It's yeah. definitely hypotenuse. Uh, hypotenuse. Ski and peel sketch. You know yep. that sketch? Really good sketch. Uh, I thought you were high fiving me. So, so yeah, I had we, we it's a hypotenuse. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just say it. So theories. So here's the thing, Katie. Guests on Garbage Time are killing it in the NFL this season. You don't say. Yeah. So we talked. We showed that Matt Ryan clip on the show mm -hmm. this, this yesterday. Yeah. And Matt Ryan is the leading passer in the league. Second leading passer in the league, Drew Brees. Oh, wow. Oh, he was also on the show. That's oh, so wow. weird. One. Leading rusher. Two. Three. For you. For you. Four. I don't remember. Win. Do you? Some more. Yeah, I do remember. You do? Yeah. It's like the best moment of my life when that happened. So One. of course I remember it. Two. Win. Win. For you. Three. Three. Four. Shut win. the door. <laughs> right? That's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, cool. It's about doors. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, quick guest on our show, leading rusher in the NFL. Patrick really? Peterson. Oh, I love Patrick in Peterson. Interceptions in the NFL. Damn. Just saying, just saying come on our show. Next yep. week, you never know. Maybe I'll have a touchdown next week. This yeah, rate. maybe. Yeah. Maybe Derek Waters is going to go out there and crush it. And a Pulitzer. Right. Pulitzer, that's what you'd win? Yeah. I think. I think it's the hippopotamus. <laughs> yeah, actually. that's the name of it. If you could study the facts before the podcast, would yeah, be great. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, we covered a lot of grounds here. Feel good about it. Hippopodcast. Okay, uh, should we just get into Fade That Pick? I think we should. I think we should Fade That Pick. Let's Fade. Um, real quick note on today's Fade That Pick. Uh, we are leaving for Dallas tomorrow for a shoot for something. Uh, so today is Wednesday and the super contest lines normally up by now. Yeah. Uh, they have we decided waited. today. Yeah. We've been waiting after yeah. we finished filming the show. We fucking waited. And then, uh, Las and Vegas. producer Matt was like refreshing it. And then he comes over and just shows me a tweet with a defeated look on his face. That's like, we had a technical error. Super contest lines won't be posted till tomorrow. Yeah. So we have to break tradition a little and go with what lines are we going with instead? We're going with like uh, consensus lines. Okay. Like on that shark and stuff. We made them up. Yeah. No, I'm just, just kidding. Just made them up. I think their tef technical difficulties. P.S. Are waiting to see if Cam Newton's playing. Just oh, a thought. That's just a fucking up. thought. So we waited. Yeah. Or maybe their technical West difficulties made. just to fuck with us. Yeah, I think it's it's one of those two. But so we're using consensus lines. But last week I was uh, I was two and one. Yeah. So what happened? You were cold as hell, and so now here's the now you're problem. Blazing hot. Here's the problem. Well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, here's the problem with fade that pick is I get to a point in the season where I think my brain goes, okay, well my normal pick would have been blank, but I'm going to fade that and pick. And then I say out loud the pre faded pick. So actually at this, I know, stay with me. I'm like panting. It's a beautiful I'm, mind. I can't figure this out. Uh, yeah. it, at, at this point, I think this week, next week and the week after don't fade them. Okay. They're going to be right. Then after that, we're going to go into a period where you got to fade them again because I'm going to like double a negative as positive. And then at the, I'll just keep you guys posted on if you should be fading or triple fading or double fading or like do the reverse route fade with the. Wow. I'm so like, something just happened to my brain. Somebody on You're Twitter. Russell Crowe and I met Harris right now. Something like that. I didn't yeah. see that movie, but that sounds right. He's not real. Oh. Sorry. 
Wow, did you have to? You didn't know who's not real, though. No, but I bet it's Ed Harris. My own. Wait, just... he's not real. Is this like an I see dead people thing? Well, fuck I, you. It's, it's, he sees beautiful people. I was way. Uh, <laughs> the statute of limitations has passed on I that think movie, so, so yeah. it's fine. But like, by the way, Titanic sinks. So what? Fuck off. I hear there's my first ever movie tits in that movie. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. So, here. Uh, so I'm what? 4 and 11 overall, Sports. and I, I nailed my lock of the week, Denver over Tampa. So my lock of the week, I'm 1 and 2, because there was good. a week where we just forgot to do it. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into our first game. What first game, Catherine, New England's at the Cleveland Browns. New mm. England's favored by 10. Okay. They're the first... Double-digit road favorite of this young season. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. But Patriots are are generally pretty good in that role. Uh, way better than the league average. Um, meanwhile, Cleveland likes to lose big at home eight times in the last three years. They like to lose big. I feel like anyway, yeah. they, they'll let them. Yeah. I mean, they lost to, by 10 to my crappy team last week. Um, Damn. In the that was game. close at one point, right? It was. They were tied. They were yeah. leading in the fourth quarter, Cleveland. Uh, but I guess there's one kind of big story this week. This guy, Tom Brady, is coming back. Who? I think he's. Uh, I think Was he, he plays... suspended or like on yeah. vacation? I think. Well, I think both. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. <laughs> His butt was in Italy. I heard about that. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, that butt yeah. was there in Italy. And you know what? It's really, yeah. it's really uh, insensitive to look at naked pictures that were taken without someone's consent. So I would highly recommend looking at these, though, because. <laughs> It's a good butt. You know, yeah, if you had a bad butt, a butt, it would be like, leave him alone. But, it's a butt. And I will, got him. to reiterate, it is just a butt. I Trust me, I searched. Like, they did that thing where they do, like, the slideshow. Check out these pictures of Tom Brady naked sunbathing. And the pictures looked like a flip book that then had no, the never had the payoff. So you're, like, flipping, and he's slowly turning over. And then it's over. And you don't see any dick. Trust me, I... T- like, I really thought, I'm like, this next oh. picture, we got to catch at least a glimpse of a ball Help and me. nothing. <laughs> no ball. Deflated, inflated, nothing. Just no testes. Nope. I'm so sorry for you. I was feeling rather yeah. testy afterwards. <laughs> I was very angry because I looked at 14 pictures of kind of butt and no dick. If it was a woman, Having they would have really gotten all the weird tip. reaction to all this. Yeah. yeah, I bet. It's called um. a boner. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> Uh, I I don't know. I'm sure you saw this. Rob Gronkowski this week said that he, he he's getting harassed by people who are frustrated because they draft him in fantasy and he only has like two catches. Yeah. He said, I can't even go to the grocery store without getting yelled at. Okay. But then a. said, then okay. why did you draft me, baby? So a couple, the best. couple things here. A, <laughs> has, this is a good debate topic, has Rob Gronkowski ever gone to the grocery store? Liquor I'm, store, maybe. I'm saying no. Do they have the liquor store, grocery store combos? Not in, Boston? in Massachusetts, okay. no. Okay. That not last I was there. I know that law changes a lot. Like now, you can buy beer at gas stations. You couldn't do that when I was younger. That makes sense. Uh, there are no cars there. Yeah, right. <laughs> this makes perfect sense. <laughs> and the gas station's still open after midnight, but they have to stop selling the beer. It's like, but it's right there, and you're right there. Why can't I buy this? So dumb. Anyway, uh, I don't think Gronk has ever been to a grocery store. And also, true. Why did you draft me then? Baby, I guess if you want to look at it the, in the most positive light, Gronk is woke as fuck because he's saying that women play fantasy football a That's lot. That's right. Yeah. And they do. And I appreciate you being so woke, Gronk. Gronk's such a feminist. He's such a low-key feminist. Yeah. Yeah. We agree there. Yeah. Um, should we make some picks? I guess so. I don't like this line. Yeah, it's a high line, but man. High line. Venge- <laughs> vengeful Tom Brady. Pats on the road. I don't know. Just feels like they're just going to come in there and smash Cleveland. That's and how now, I feel. So you're picking? I'm picking New England. New England? Yep. I feel like, yeah. I was going to say I feel like they could cover, but like I don't because they're Cleveland. If it was another team and it was this high, I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. But also keep in mind the Red Sox are playing the Indians in the first That's round. Right. So like this is like, a, wow. like they have to set the tone and win this game. Wow. I actually don't know when the first game of the Thursday, series is. I think. Okay. Right? Is so that's Thursday? gonna maybe that's maybe yeah. that's what the super contest is waiting for, <laughs> to see if the Sox win the first game. That can, way they can. Can you imagine if Cleveland to exercise all of its championship demons? I know. They, you know, if this be, was the year. That would suck. Be it's crazy. not gonna happen. I'm taking New England minus ten. All right. 
Next game. Second game. Uh, whoa, why did we pick this one? I, Chicago, can, I was just thinking the exact same Chicago thing. Chicago at Indianapolis. Indianapolis favored by four and a half. I, four and a half what? Dump, dumpster <laughs> fires? Uh, <laughs> Chicago. Poops on the field. <laughs> uh, Chicago is six and three against the spread on the road in their last nine, which makes uh, approximately no sense. Zero sense. But here's the craziest goddamn thing ever. <laughs> Indianapolis played in London last week. Yeah. What, are we calling it playing? Or They, did, they showed up. They were there. <laughs> um, they requested to not have their bye week as they came back this week. Okay, who in the NFL wants to be the first to try anything? Yeah. Makes no sense. Are the, so the Jaguars have a bye the week Jags this week? The Jaguars have a bye, And yes. normally when you go to London, you come back and you have a bye because you've got to adjust to right. the time zone sure. and the f- you can eat regular food again. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I get why you'd want a bye week. Your football, you can play with your hands. You can play you can with your hands. You can use your hands. Your hands. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Football, you're not like, oh shit, what sport do I play? Right. So you need the, the bye week, but not Indy. Indy's no. like, we got this. Like, we'll be the first. They didn't even got this when they were in England. Why would they? <laughs> it's not like a momentum play because their momentum is trending downward. Trending horribly. Trending really far down. Uh, so that was an odd choice. You know what else was an odd choice? Was uh, releasing and waving a, uh, two, like, two starters. Two starters. Like Cromartie, goodbye. Goodbye. See you more, Cromartie, bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Gone. So those are two starters. We just don't need those guys, I guess. Uh, really weird. Really weird. Strange choices being made there. Yes. Coach extensions also being made Coach there. Coach extensions. Meanwhile, which is a strange choice. Like in Chicago, Brian Hoyer like kind of might be better than Jay Cutler, maybe. I don't even know they what that means well anymore. We've know. reached a point in the NFL where it's like that doesn't surprise me because nothing means anything anymore. Yeah. Like who? I, Jay I Cutler I don't know what to make of that. is just not good, but Correct. expensive, not good. Yes. Hoyer has played for 14, 19, 27 teams now yes. in the NFL. I think so. Someone check that. I just don't get it. Don't it's either. so hard to predict anything in this fucking league. I'll tell you what. I am positive Chicago's winning this game. Yeah? Yeah. Well, so last week, remember, I said Positive. the Jags were going to win. And then I even, I said, why did I say that? And you were like, I don't know. Yeah. And it happened. It did happen. So I I think Indy is garbage. I've thought that. I think Andrew Luck, when you watch a nationally broadcast Colts game, the announcers jump through hoops of fire <laughs> to blame things on everybody but Andrew Luck, which yeah. 90% of the time may be the case. But every now and then you got to go, dumb play there by luck. Yeah. Just to point out, that was not luck's fault there. That was the fault. Every, it's like. It's true. It's almost as if Andrew Luck called them and was like, guys, can you only say nice things? They go out of their way. It's very weird. I agree with that completely. Like he's good. Yeah. But he's not, we don't have to blow him. No, we don't. He missed that throw to Dwayne Allen at the end of the game yeah. last week. He just and like, he like waddled up and pushed it. It's like just sl- like sling it yeah. in there, hot shot. In the first half, there were a couple drop passes. Not his fault, but but kind of. Yeah. 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 It was a weird. They're the they're a weird team. Yeah. I almost think they need to do one of those trick plays. And, and just get to, to get things back on track. Yeah. You know, try a weird fake snap, weird punt yeah. thing. Sign Griff Whalen, you know? Just jump right hot into an ice cold yeah. water bath. Yeah. And just wake themselves just like, up. That made sense, right? Yeah. I that think analogy works. We're you, tired. Yeah, I think we are. Are you going to go with me with the bears? Um, Four and a half, and it's in Indy. Yeah. You know, they got that banner there that says they won... So much so it's like a constant reminder of how successful they were kind of in a mediocre <laughs> sort of way. I'm going to say, oh, but Kevin White's out. Kevin White is out. And he's their lead receiver, is he not? I think he, like Not in terms sure. of like catches. I mean, it's, he's been he's been good. He's been it good. Sucks. It sucks to see him go down again. So we're gonna say, I'm gonna okay. I'll say, sh- what did you? Did we agree on the first one? Yes. Yeah. So I know I just went off about Indy being bad, but I feel like I can't take the <laughs> same pick as you. I'm gonna say in no. I'm gonna, mm, uh. I'm gonna say Chicago. I'm going to say Chicago plus four and a half. I don't fucking know anymore. Yeah, who knows? I can't even trust myself. Yeah. I feel like, is this Westworld? This, 
I need. To, we need to talk about Westworld. Are we in Westworld? Yeah. Okay. What's our last game? Is last it another game. shit game? Maybe of a good shit game. People? Maybe a good game, Katie. Okay. It's the Giants, who suddenly are like need to win some games. Yeah. Uh, at Green Bay, Green Bay favored by seven, coming off that early bye week. And they looked real good before that they bye week. They did look real good. Yeah. Um. So the Giants have not been good lately. O four and one against the spread in their last five. But Eli likes to be counted out. Right, Patriots fan? Ha mm-hmm. <laughs> ha. But Eli, okay. 15 and doing? 5 in his last 20 as a seven or more point underdog. Okay. So he likes to, he likes to, uh, this be the says like a weird sexual undertone to it. I, like Eli likes when you treat him like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Eli really like likes it face. when he's the dog. He likes to be a dog. Treat him like a dog. <laughs> woof, woof. Anyway, uh, what's anyway. going on with Odell Beckham Jr.? I think kind of a lot. I know. Yeah. He said he's not having fun playing football anymore. Aw. Aw. Poor guy. Aww. Wow. It must be so hard. Aw. Which, you know, maybe it is. Maybe he's in a tough spot. You know, maybe, you know, the whole Lena Dunham thing really got to him. And he's like, shit. It's just going to go there. I should have uh, <laughs> I should have known who she was. I should have said hi. Why didn't I say hi? And now he's just like binge watching girls and he's just yeah. losing his center because he doesn't understand. Shoshana. Yeah. What and like, where are the black people? He's like where so are confused. They? Yeah, so so like, questions. there's so much that could be going on. Yeah. And the, the best thing for me is it, it does look like there's a lot going on in his brain and it just spills out of his. <laughs> I can't, that haircut's not doing it for me. Yeah. But, you know, it's to each his own. You know, he's really going with it now. To each his own. Um, he's just not uh, doing much and he's getting. Okay, <laughs> so, my, <laughs> so, so my pen just got caught in my hair. Uh, we'll just keep going. So uh, he's getting really emotional. I know, I'm sorry. It's been a really long week, and it's not even close to over, and so that's I thought I should leave it. He's getting really emotional <laughs> on the sidelines. He got still into in that hair. fight. Oh, wait, <laughs> wait did it, you know did that I there's still it? a pen in your hair? Wait, is, did I get it? Yeah. Just keep doing, yep. He got, so he got into that fight with the net and lost. Yeah. <laughs> and, KO, uh, yep. Then he, there was like crying. Yeah. There was yelling this week. Yeah. He Pe- seems emotionally hyped up. People seem to be getting in his head. Yeah. I think that that's the key is if you just say stuff to him, he kind of has a meltdown. Is he, um, put this into perspective for me. He's young, but how young is he? 22. Oh, like shit. That maybe? sucks. Yeah. That sucks, He's man. Really young. I got like pissed off at Twitter this week because of like three people. I can't even imagine what it's I like know. to have everybody be like, oh my God, you're the best. Catch things with one hand again. Oh my God, let's put you on the cover of this. Oh my God, come do this. Oh my God. Like when he was on our show, he was very quiet. Yeah. He was so like, chill. he didn't say no Funny. to anything we said. He, yeah. he did it. But you could tell he was like in his head, like, I got this other thing I got to do. And I, he didn't even take his backpack off. Yeah. He kept his backpack on for the entire segment. He did. Um, didn't Tom Coughlin say he wanted to help him? Yeah, which I thought was really funny because so Tom Coughlin offered to help Odell Beckham out. He was like, the camera's always on him. He's a distraction. Like, he needs somebody to just kind of rein him in. Mm. And I was, I was like, okay, so that's a a shot at your former like offensive coordinator who's yep. now the coach, and b like we get it, you want to coach, like, yeah, right? That's what the coach is. Like, job Odell, is. do you need do you need anything? I'm here at the gym at the Giants. Still, I'm just still, <laughs> I'm still working here. out. Yeah. in my dad socks and definitely a sweatband. Oh, he definitely wears sure. like a, one of the head sweatbands yeah. and a Walkman, like the yellow oh, ones yeah. with a like a wrist um, a waist clasp yep. yes yes and a cell, <laughs> like two cell phones also stuck on his belt yeah hello yeah. no one still wants to be coach a okay Bluetooth bye. in his ear <laughs> getting calls uh, that was a good Tom Coughlin bit. That was a really we good We should do Tom more Coughlin bits about bit. coaches that aren't in the more NFL anymore. bits about Tom Coughlin. Do you want to make a pick now? I guess so. Okay. You go first. Uh Green Bay. That's it. I like Green Bay a lot. Me too. I think off the bye week they're going to be at full strength. Another week of Jordy. I feel like this has got to be Randall Cobb's week. It better be. I've drafted him twice. Better be his week. Uh, Giants look a little shaky. Yeah. I only feel like, and I'm going to pick Green Bay, so spoiler alert, but like they looked pretty meh in the first two weeks of the season. First, yeah, first two. Then third week came out amazing against the Lions. Yep. Then they get a bye week. I get a little nervous of like you wanted to keep rolling. Mm-hmm. You wanted to go, fuck yeah, we're back. Instead, you took a week off. Yeah. So I, I'm 
would be it would be a hot take to say that because of a bye week they're not going to be rolling. No, They'll be fine. That makes sense, but like you almost are like, nah, I don't take your bye week now. And I wonder if they were kicking themselves about it. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm gonna say uh, Green Bay minus seven. We agree. Yeah. Fade our picks. I mean, whatever. Fade our picks like, this whatever, week. Whatever, man. Yeah, people come for the Coughlin bits, not yeah, for our picks. Yeah, of course they do. <laughs> um, lock of the week this week. I don't know what the line is going to be, but right now it's a pick 'em Cincy Dallas, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't. That sounds crazy to me. Yeah. It's in. Is it in Dallas? It is. So that I guess makes a little bit of sense, but uh, I'm going to pick Cincy as my lock of the week. I like that. Lock of the week. Oh my lord! <laughs> I know, so, Doctor Schwacker. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, guys, we're gonna get to the Derek Waters interview in a minute. And again, it's not so much an interview as like we got drunk and talked about that time I got drunk for TV. But it, it's, I think it's pretty decent. Um, but first, we want to talk to you about the Black Tux. Do you have a wedding or special event coming up and need a tux now? Don't panic. The Black Tux design modern fit suit and tuxedo rentals that deliver straight to your door. And now the Black Tux will give you a free home try-on so you can see the fit and feel the quality of their suits before your event. And the best part, you can do it all online. You can. You would know that. I would know that. You can choose your own look at their website, theblacktux.com. Prices start at just $95. Most tux rentals cost like hundreds and you have to go to the store three times, which seems excessive to me. Like, you're not getting married, someone else is. And then you get sized up by this weirdo and he puts his hand in an area that you're like, is this weird? So that's just a waste of time and also uncomfortableness. You only have a threshold for so much uncomfortableness, uncomfortability. Tell me about it. And their suits are designed. (laughs) We hit yours every week. Uh, Their suits are designed with fine Italian wool, highest quality in the rental market. Matt, how do bitches feel about Fine Italian wool. They love it. Bitches love it. Love it. Uh, Their expert customer care team is always available to answer questions. Um, Matt, you wore your black tux last week. I did. I did. Yeah. And uh, it was a hit. It was super comfortable. I felt great. I looked, I think, pretty good. Great. You great. You can say it. Thank you. It was, uh, here's the win. When Katie Nolan tells you on social media that you look good, guys, that's all the endorsement you need. I've, that was like a big deal for me. It looked so nice. Like even people were, were screen grabbing a picture of you in the pod and tweeting it out. And I'm like, he looks so handsome that exactly. I retweeted yeah. it to be like, hey, everybody go to Black Tux. Um, and the funny thing is he didn't even have a wedding or like anything to go to. He just wanted to yeah. wear that tuxedo. Yeah. And um, he's, right. he now just like wears it all the time. And I was like, Matt, can you take it off the podcast this week? Just because yeah. like the bit's over. And he's like, oh, it's not a bit. It's my lifestyle. <laughs> it's just so. my life. Anyway, visit theblacktux.com slash garbage and experience a new way to rent. That's theblacktux.com slash garbage. And if you want, tweet me a picture of you in your black tux. And if I think you look handsome, I'll retweet it. Thank you, the black tux. Guys, I also want to tell you about Blue Apron. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron uh, delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. You're not wasting a bunch of food and ingredients that give you just what you need, and all of a sudden, you're a dope-ass cook. I have a lot of things I should be reading, but instead, I'm going to tell you that this week I made fried catfish. What? I fried catfish, and it was so good. I've never cooked a fish in my life. It's amazing. But I pulled out the recipe. I'll be completely honest, I forgot to go to the met to the website and like change my recipes cuz you can do that. And I forgot this week cuz I've been really busy and then it showed up and I'm like catfish. I can't make catfish. I just watch it on MTV. Great show, great show. <laughs> and so I uh try, I'm like fine, I'll try and then I'll have like pizza on standby just in case. Yep. And I Crushed it. That's awesome. Because they make it so easy. That's and it so was cool. so good. And it was like really, really good quality seafood, nice. which is fantastic. So, guys, Blue Apron, it's great. The best ingredients, step by step, easy to fall recipe card, 40 minutes or less, you can prepare them. Uh, it's flexible. I'm gone a lot, so I can, I now have the next few weeks. Um, on pause because oh, I'm going to be away nice. and then you can pick it back up when you get home. So it's like very easily customizable to your life. Like I said, you can go on and change your recipes. It's really great. So check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash garbage. You guys, you're going to love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. Blueapron.com slash garbage. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. And for me, that's because anything is better than setting your kitchen on fire. <laughs> Uh, okay, so like I said before, Derek Waters came in. We hung out for a little bit. You will see him on the show next week. Uh, we play a game called Who Wants to Drink? 
a million beers. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. So it's good. But so after good. we drank the million beers, we did this podcast segment. So if it's a little disjointed, it's that's probably why. The new season of Drunk History started September 27th. It's on Tuesdays at 1030 Eastern uh, on Comedy Central. I am on it, which I think is not next Tuesday. It's Tuesday after that. And if I'm wrong... You should be watching all of them anyway because they're really good. Watching both. So uh, here is Derek Waters and I talking about drunk history. Derek, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, season four of Drunk History premiered September twenty seventh, Tuesday, ten thirty, Comedy Central. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> That's just funny. Like I don't I really want to do an interview. I just like hanging no, out. No, we're gonna like, we're gonna hang okay, out. Yeah. I just had to get that part yeah. out. Yeah, because now that's streaming. Important. So I just Tuesdays, want to do the same bits again. Tuesdays at ten thirty yeah. is when people can find drunk on history. Comedy Sench. On Comedy Sench. Also on the app. Comedy and now streaming on Hulu. Sench. Uh, season four. That's four seasons. So crazy. That's that a hotel. Is, yeah, no, that is a yeah. four seasons yeah. hotel. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, do yeah. You, is five? Are when you? I, yeah, I I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but okay. we then, started five. So, so then five. Yeah. Five, staying Dope. alive. Amazing. Uh, I'm on it this season. You crush it. And this is, sorry, I'm not trying to do your job. No, you're good. No, please. We just watched I... your first, <laughs> you just watched it for the first time. Yeah. And what do you feel? Relieved. Yeah. To be honest, first feeling relieved. Yeah. Because I've done a lot of drunk television segments. And this is, I think, my first drunk podcast. But it's scary because you and I only casually know each other. Like, I could totally just put something in there that would be yeah. embarrassing, but Which I would I don't never think, do that. I think you're a nice guy. I don't right. think you would do that. But at the same time, you got a TV show to make, and you got to get renewed for the next season. All I know is that you came to my house. <laughs> Your people, like little ninjas, yeah. rearranged it. <laughs> I spent the whole day cleaning it. I remember you telling and me. And they rearranged it, and I was like, well, that was fucking stupid. I should have just left it a mess. <laughs> uh, and then got me drunk, mm -hmm. and I don't remember anything after that. Like, I remember telling the story maybe halfway through once, and then nothing after that. So it was like anything that airs, I could have been like, you know who I really don't like? And just like could have, to any end of that sentence right, you could yeah. possibly, it yeah. could have been really bad. Sure. But yeah. you did a really good job. Thanks, Katie. Yeah. So did you. No, well, so I just got drunk. Well, my goal is that I make the audience look stupid and not the narrators. Like, I want the audience to be like, oh, they're drunk. Like, <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. Holy shit, I just learned something. Yeah, so back when I first was watching, when you guys were like a YouTube, not YouTube, but like an yeah. internet show, mm -hmm. uh, I remember being like, if I fact check these, I bet they're wrong. You right. fact check one episode and you're like, fuck. Yeah. They're really smart. It's yeah, it's all one hundred percent true. Is that and like Teddy, sneaky? The goal that you want people secretly, to learn things. Yeah, yeah. But you I mean, can't comedy say that. like well, it's like why why did we like our favorite teachers? Because they didn't feel like teachers. They mm. felt like our friends. And it sounds really weird to say like drunk people like kind of like we all can relate to these people in the state that they're in. And your your like listening skills are more aware like. Being like, oh, this guy's, is he okay? Like, and then you start getting invested in the story. And like, most of the stories about people struggling, and when you're watching somebody struggle, you're like, there's, I don't, I don't know, it sounds pretentious, but yeah, the secret goal is to tell stories that I'm like, it's, why don't we know about Teddy Roosevelt saving football? As a person who loves sports, I yeah. never knew that story. Well, yeah. I mean, I knew that story really well. You knew it now. for years. You've been like, <laughs> when can I talk about Teddy saving football? But like, I didn't football? know it as well as like, I actually learned something. And I have mentioned that in conversations, mm -hmm. like since. People are like, oh, concussions are really bad. Like, sports really violent, more violent than it's ever been. I'm like, excuse me. Right. There were actually lots of deaths in football when it first started. Yeah. Because of drunk history. And the other thing, and I think we talked about it before filming, what I liked about that story and how you told it was like, it is an issue that is happening right now, but I never wanted that like to be pointed out. Like, yeah. It just is there. It's yeah. just like, take it for what it is. This is something that happened and is still kind of happening now, but I'd never want the show to be political. Of like, oh, that's so great. Yeah, yeah we should really think about that. But you do like touch on these political issues yeah. that you, but you don't address them. It's sort of like take this and right. put this it in your you own want. context. Right. This is what happened. I'm not telling you what to do. Yeah. yeah. And also, we got really drunk. It was really fun. <laughs> we ordered pizza. Do you remember that? No. Nope. Okay. It was a great. Pizza. I literally. So you left. You guys mm -hmm. left. Yeah. Early. 
You were like, with the, we're leaving you two know, hours early. And what did I say when I first got there? I okay. don't know. Well, I say Great no matter. Apartment. I said no. I said no matter what, you'll never believe me that you'll tell oh, yeah. the story tonight. You said you're going to email me tomorrow and say I'm so sorry I didn't tell the story. Do you need to come back and do it again? And I was like, I'm not an idiot. I've gotten drunk before. I know what this feeling is. It's not my first time. Right. My first rodeo. The next morning, I woke up and was like, "Fuck, Derek! I am so sorry. Did I not tell the story? <laughs> like you told me I was gonna do it, it's and just, then I did it. That's just what happened. It was, yeah. but you get so drunk. Yeah. You guys left early because we were supposed to be there for a lot longer, and you're like, you know what? We got everything we needed. You are efficient and drunk. And then you left. Your your medic like BAC'd me. It was like point one nine, I think. Point one eight. Oh, yeah. And I was like, that was, it happened in three, I think you were there for three hours. Mm -hmm. So that's a very fast amount of time to get that yeah. drunk. Uh, and I was like, yo, this is dope. Like, I took a picture with them of like, this is my BAC. I was very proud of it. Uh, and then you guys left. And I remember I was so drunk that I was like, let's smoke a cigarette. And so I had a cigarette. And as, as soon as I was done, I sat on the couch, put my head down and went, Mm -mm. Sat yeah. up and just puked I'm everywhere. Sorry. No, it's fine because I puked. I got it all out. And you felt. I assume I ate the pizza that okay. we ordered. Yeah. And then went to bed. Woke up, no hangover. Wild. Because you make us drink the liquidy stuff yeah. before. Yeah. It's like a hydrating thing. Yeah. Before I'm not and then. Sponsored by it, but it's called Motive Pure, and it's the best. And you wouldn't leave. The thing I think people probably don't know is how responsible you guys are. So you made me chug a thing of it before we started. Mm -hmm. And then when we were leaving, you didn't leave until you made sure I drank it afterwards. Right. And there's a medic on site the entire time. Yeah. And I had to get blood drawn to yeah. be on your show. I am deathly afraid of needles. Likewise. So I, like, put that off. And then your people called and were like, we see that you did the physical. But you didn't get the blood work done. You have to go get the blood work done. And I was like, but I'm fine. So I don't think we need to. Yeah. And I had to go and get blood drawn. I passed out, which is fine. <laughs> I'm a huge baby with This is with a needles. great experience for you. Like, it was wonderful, but the but getting the blood drawn. I don't like that either, but it's I no, have it's, to do it's, it. I, I think people don't realize that you guys are really responsible with that yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't want anyone drinking that shouldn't be drinking. Yeah. It's not like, yeah, let's get fucked up. Yeah. It's like, it's a job, and I want to be professional about it. Which is crazy, because it's a job where you just get fucked up, but there was like a doctor in my apartment right. sitting on my bed making yeah. sure I was okay. He was shady. He was Because <laughs> he, he, he isn't well with shady. us all the time. Because we never have gone to New York. We've never gone mm. to different cities to do the stories. Usually they're in LA. Uh. But I got to do you, Lin-Manuel, and then this girl, Crystal. You know Crystal West? You I don't her. know her personally, but yeah. I know of her. You're going to meet her tonight. Yeah, I'm excited. Hashtag. Um, Hashtag. <laughs> Uh, uh, wait, before I was, I was, was going to end on something. Oh, that guy. Just because, like, I have to address this. He wasn't, I mean, he was a medic. <laughs> I'm using air quotes, podcasters. Um, but he was close to 400. He was so <laughs> And I'm not kidding. He walked in and I said, are you the camera guy? He said, no, I'm the medic. And I went, no, you're not. <laughs> he was huge. We have this beautiful woman named Anna Baltimore, and I'm not biased because of her last name. But she's who does it in L.A., and she is a real medic. But this guy was so not a medic that when I was smoking outside a cigarette, he's like, you know, you should really smoke cigars instead of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> the medic. It's the medic practical, though. though. It's yes. like, I know you're not going to quit yeah. smoking. If you want to go a little bit lighter, go cigars. But we could hear him breathing while I, you're telling the story. Yeah, well, I was at like, least we knew. Geez. At least we knew he was still alive, because I didn't yeah. know. But it was fun. You but, did um, so good. Would you come back? Yeah, of course. You would. Of course I would. Okay. Now that I know that I'm safe. Because I want you to. W really? I'm asking you right now. This is you asking me to come this back on This is me asking you on your podcast yes. if you'll come back. 100% yes. Baby, come back. Yeah. I've been uh... Wait, really? Yes. Is this like a thing you do for show? And then you're like, no. oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my style. It seems like your style. Yeah, I'm a real To dick. be totally honest. Are you, is that my, no, is that just my voice? <laughs> Wait, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, are we gonna drink the same thing? Because this is That's the- That's up to you. So last time, to, for our listeners and viewers, you, they're like, what they do when you're doing drunk history is they say, uh, have, a, have the thing you wanna drink available, 
and I think you said like we'll bring our own stuff, but like if there's a thing you want to drink, right. have it. So I went out and got a bottle of Bullet Bourbon, and you showed up with a bottle of Bullet Bourbon, and I was like, well, this is gonna work out. Yeah. And I think between the two of us, we drank like a bottle and a half. Definitely. Yeah. And this is one of the like big, yeah. wide. Yeah. Yeah. It was not one of those small, plain mm -mm. bullet bourbons. It, it wasn't a nip. Uh, is that what they're called? That's disgusting. The little baby ones? Yeah, a nip? That's called a nip. I don't like that. It's sexist as fuck. Like a nipple? Yeah. No, I don't think no. that's what it's named after. But it, well, you said a nip. Yeah. That's it's called a nip. I don't like this nip. I think they were simultaneously named nips. I yeah. don't think they had anything to do with each other. <laughs> I don't so you, would was... you drink bullet bourbon again, or would you rather something that... Uh, so my decision was no beer because I'll be full. Right. Uh, and I knew that we were going to have to drink a bunch. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to go straight bourbon from the jump because then I would get fucked up. And so we did. I did bourbon and Diet Coke. And then as we went through, I was like, just give me less Diet Coke. And right. I think three drinks in, I was just going bourbon. <laughs> but you also did something that I ask not to do, which is drinking before I get there. A little, just like a just half a little. one. I had just started. It all ended well. But there's the a reason why I like to drink like, with you. A, yeah. It's because then I I know exactly How what much. you're dealing with. Yeah. yeah. I had like half of a drink before you got right. there. I wasn't, you're making it sound like I, no, you, you got there not I was drunk, fucked up. But you were like, I had a drink before and I, yeah. Yeah. Next time yeah. I do it, if you're being serious. I'm dead serious. I'm gonna be sure to shower first. There was one <laughs> shot. Yeah, well so that day, I woke up, I think we had just done the Super Bowl of like five days of shows. Okay. We came back, and I had a podcast that afternoon with Alexa Dat, who I love, and I scheduled that way in advance, and I was like, I don't wanna cancel on her, but I'm gonna like go to that and then rush back, and my apartment needs to be clean. And so I did the podcast, I came back, and I'm like, oh, I didn't fucking shower. I'm like, well, we'll be fine. And I watched it back, and I was like, oh, God. It was you just that one greasy. shot, Katie. I think it's because it was at the end of the night when yeah. I had been doing this. Right, yeah. All night long, which I do when I drink. <laughs> yeah. But I appreciate you not using this shot where I got really red and splotchy. And I said, am I splotchy? You were like, yeah, should we stop? Your camera was guy worried. was like, do you need us to I thought you stop? might be allergic. Yeah, you know who wasn't worried? The medic. The medic, At yeah. no point was he like, are you okay? Yeah. He was like, uh, uh, and then took a bite of a cheeseburger. Like, I don't think he came out of my bedroom at all. But it was an overall lovely experience. Did I do okay? Oh, more than okay. I told I the love story. It. There's people that do it uh, that uh, that don't air. Like, really? Yeah. How, like, what percentage of people do you film that then you're like, I can't use this? Well... More in the old days, back in the YouTube mm. days. But now that it's like a job, I make sure like you tell the story on the phone with a producer so like I know that you know it. Yeah. And I know we're gonna be okay. I was nervous for that. Yeah, I'm the sure. The pre interview yeah. with the producer. As it feels like an audition. Yeah, because they're like, tell me the story that we want you to tell. And I was like, fuck, I gotta make sure I hit right. every point. Right. When I was done, he was like, You're good. You yeah. got it. Maybe focus a little more on adding some dialogue to this part. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. So it's good. So I was like focused on it because our show it was done. The season was over. And so I'm like, I can focus on really telling this story. And you also had Seth Myers the next night. So I woke up the morning after thinking I was going to be hung over as shit. And I'm like, this is going to suck because I have a pre-interview for Seth Myers, which is my first late night show I've ever done other than my own. Uh, at 10 a.m. and I'm like, I'm gonna be fucked up. I wasn't, because I puked and ate the pizza the night before. <laughs> I puked so much. I'm sorry. I, it's, I don't no, like don't hearing be. that. But I, it, it, no, I I'm don't. I'm sorry I didn't do it on camera. No, no. If you did it while we were there, it wouldn't be on TV. I don't I like I told puking. my parents, they said, we're very proud of you. Just please don't puke on TV. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm very proud of you too. I have to go. And I hung up the phone. I was like, I can't make any promises, but I'll try not to. Right, no, you did it. You did it so good. I held out. But I sincerely would love it if you wanted to do it again. I would love to do it again. Okay. And maybe I'll get like a cooler apartment. That apartment was far away. It's like Hoboken. Well, I had to fly here. It was yeah. really far. That's true. <laughs> Who's who else is narrating this season? Who cares? I do. Because I want to know who are my like fame peers. Yeah, well, uh, in your Lin episode? Yeah. In your oh, sure. Oh yeah. Paget Brewster, you know her. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and the other one, my dear friend Eric Edelstein. He does, uh, it's, yeah, obviously, you know, it's all Roosevelt stories. Mm. Um, but other narrators, Bob Odenkirk got drunk and told the story yeah, of disco like, demolition we're in like 1979. Fame. Same fame. Yeah, keep Katie, going. Why what are else? you downplaying yourself? Uh, like, cuz, keep going. Who else? <laughs> Lin Manuel Miranda? I'm Lim, just trying to make Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just stroking yeah. my ego. Yes, yes. Lin Manuel Miranda mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. Hamilton fame. Mm -hmm. We've all heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. He oh. threw away his shot. Do you make him do Death. shots? Death. Uh, yes, I did make him do shots. Smart. Of what? He drank Tennessee whiskey. Oh. Yeah. That's but we cool. shot it at his parents' house, and it was really weird because oh. I'd only seen that house uh, on 60 Minutes when they were like being <laughs> interviewed, and then I'm like, shit face drunk, singing Closing Time with him, which I brought up. You today. sang Closing Time? Yeah, because he was like, there's a, there's a scene in the uh, story. I am, I humbly am very excited. Alia Shawcat plays Hamilton and Aubrey wow. Plaza plays Burr, so. Oh my God. So I didn't want to do like, Hashtag exactly. Feminism. Yeah. Yeah. You go girls. Yep. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but there's a story that like, a couple nights before Hamilton and Burr dueled, they were at the same bar and Hamilton was like leading people in a song and I was like, what song was it? He's like, I don't know, but every new beginning. And then he just like naturally loves closing time and so we sang it on the piano. And Aww. somehow we afforded to pay semi-sonic That's so we can do it. That's a lot of money. It's so much. You Actually, know that guy? It's a lot because that guy, what's that guy doing now? It was $20,000. I didn't pay it. $20,000 to do semi-sonics? Yeah. Fuck. I'll get in trouble for saying it. But um, yeah, those people. And that guy now writes all Adele's music. Like he wrote uh, "Hello," yeah. The closing time guy wrote "Hello." Hello. Are you just taking advantage of the fact that we don't have fact checkers on this? Yeah. <laughs> like that I'm sounds like, legit. That's yeah. crazy. He co-wrote "Runaway Train." <laughs> <laughs> he sings "Hey Jealousy." Uh, Insane. Yeah. No. So, uh, what was my point of that? I don't oh, know. being at that house, I'd only seen on sixty minutes, and I'm drunk with this guy, like interviewing. I'm like. I'm like, Keith Morrison? Is it weird for you to get drunk? Keith Morrison's awful. What? Is no. he the one I don't like? Who's the one I don't like He's... on Dateline that does the very Ooh, it serious? It was Katie Nolan's first show wasn't her last. Yeah, that's Keith <laughs> Morrison. You don't like him? No. Because he says things like, and then she died. With like a happiness. <laughs> I'm like, be sad about like? it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch a lot of 60 so, Minutes. I watch Dateline. That's and Dateline. Keith Morrison's yeah. Dateline. It's Dateline. Yeah, I don't know Keith. I don't know 60 Minutes either. Lester Munson is Lester, a, Lester is, Holt. Lester Holt. Lester all he does is like, next time on Dateline. Like, yeah, that's all he, he does. Yeah, he does a really good job at He's saying, really good. next, this going to be on next time. What was the your favorite moment of filming Drunk History with the drunk Katie Nolan? My favorite moment? Um, that's a good question. It didn't make it to the episode, but learning ballet from you was really mm. nice. Um, Neither of us can remember why, but I did teach you the ballet, the five positions of ballet. It was in a gag reel we showed at the premiere. I wish you could really. Have been there. Yeah, I, I'm like, what is this position called? I have my leg up on your counter. And you're like, I don't know, and I'm like, I think it's called fucking with Derek. And it really hurt. It really hurt. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. I, the whole thing was fun. I am such a fan of yours, so it was just cool. Why? What are you talking about? Because you're great at what you do. And you're I... great at what you do. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you it for was, thank, having me on your show. Thank you for listening to me. That's a podcast. I find it weird that you haven't been making eye contact with me. Because it's just about listening. <laughs> but I appreciate you listening to me. Do you want me to, to me. not? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you for Thank letting you me for be on Drunk me. History. Thank you for, I'm gonna hold you to asking me to be on the next season. So hold if you're me. fucking with me, that sucks for you because <laughs> you're gonna learn how crazy I am when I call you every day. And I'm like, Derek, remember that thing you said, Derek? I wanna say really quick, I might steal one of your ideas and I'm saying right now on your show mm -hmm. that you came up with it. Like I wanna do an episode this season called Drunk Mystery and you came up with that. But it's, I'm just gonna, the episode's just I gonna be came up with that. Unsolved Mysteries. But That's I'm Matt just gonna Ford. call it's a it Matt, Drunk. Producer Matt production. So, Drunk Mysteries. Is that okay him. if I'm allowed to use it? Because it came permission? from you guys. Me, permission. Yeah, do you give permission? Yeah, of course. 
Nod your fucking head. Yeah, he says it's okay. Okay, great. Oh, and I have a gripe to bring up with you, real quick. Go. You guys rearranged my house when you got there, and you're like, don't worry, we'll bring, we'll put everything back. Did they not put it back? You put everything back, and I was like, that's amazing, they did that so fast. Yeah. You had unplugged my fridge. Oh, and you forgot to plug it back in. I didn't. And I but was that's drunk. Not cool. And so the next day, I was like, this house smells real bad. Because everything in my head <laughs> spoiled. That's not fun. So you owe I'm me like so a hundred dollars. But that's fine. Like you just pay me later. Okay. Okay. You're the best. You're the best. I'm drunk and I shouldn't be. It's the middle of the day. All right. Thanks again to Derek Waters. That was uh fantastic. Love that guy. He's so awesome. nice. Yeah. So nice. Great dude. Um, I guess now it's time for junk mail. Yeah, junk mail. Is it from Jason Waterfalls? <laughs> no, it's from oh. Sean, Sean Lachlan. La uh, it's Lachlan. at S-L-O-U-G-H 44. Sloth. I guess there are 43 other sloths out there. <laughs> uh, he wants to know, uh, he, or he, he needs a Mount Rushmore of Halloween candy. He needs it. Now, I'm hesitant to do my Mount Rushmore because I know that everyone's gonna tweet at Pardon My Take and say, hmm, Katie Nolan did a Mount Rushmore as if I stole the bit. Sean Laughlin stole the bit. Sloth That's stole the bit. How you say and that. so we're doing a Mount Rushmore of Halloween candy. Deal. There are four presidents on Mount Rushmore. Yeah. As everyone knows, it's George Washington. <laughs> sure. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. No. Abraham Lincoln. Yes. And John Adams. I have no idea who's on Mount Two, Rushmore. Four. It is those four presidents. It are those four presidents. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> my, it are those four. And so um, my what Mount Rushmore. Unnecessary <laughs> like detour. This verb agreement is are important. Um, oh my god. So, my four presidential candies, uh, not outrageous. If you go, you gotta go to the rich neighborhoods, because <laughs> no poor neighborhoods giving out not outrageous, because they don't even. I, Schwachter says they come in bite size. I I don't think I've ever seen Literally them come. Literally never had one in my life. No, what? Okay. It's the best candy bar. Take okay. five, also good, but you don't get those on. Nobody gives those out on Halloween, and we're, we're here to be realistic. I. We're fact checked here, and I listed all those presidents that, that correctly, and so I have to <laughs> stick to the bit. So, Nutrageous, number one. Nutrageous is the George Washington of my Mount Rushmore. Okay. Uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. No, because Nutrageous has peanut butter, so that's a waste of a Abraham Lincoln. Um, I'm going to say, uh, I wrote here lollipops. Uh, I meant like blow, blow pops, because you, people don't usually think Gum. of those. Come in the middle. Yeah. All right. I don't even, it's not even about it's the, the Bryant candy. Gumball in the middle. It's more about, um, <laughs> it's more about it's for me, the, the, <laughs> the candy part of it. They're better than a Tootsie Roll Pop. For sure. In terms of like the candiness. Yep. So a good lollipop. So that'll be my Abraham Lincoln. Uh, my John Adams is who I said and who is on the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> my John Adams is um, nerds. Love nerds. Yeah. In the little boxes on Halloween, you get the nerds. So, and, and also just open. Yeah, open, pour them in your mouth, and then shove them in a locker. Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> you know who the old presents are? <laughs> Mount Rushmore nerds. Yeah, John Adams is a huge nerd, and so he's that's uh, since he is on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, him and John Quincy both on Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Little known fact. Well, that's not true, but uh, <laughs> anyway. And then the fourth president who I named was Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who certainly is on, are on Mount Rushmore. Uh, let's say Three Musketeers. Wow. It happened. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. They're great. They're so great. They're great. Uh, let's try. get out of here. Let's do that. Let's uh, go home yeah. into Dallas, respectively. Uh, that's it for the Garbage Time Podcast. You guys, this is a really fun one. I'm, there were no facts, but that's what if, who gives a shit who about cares? facts? Be sure to subscribe on iTunes where you can rate us and leave a comment, but only if it's five stars and if the comment is nice. Otherwise, maybe just wait till next week and I promise we'll just hit you with facts off the top. 
Facts, facts, facts. Facts, 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 facts. We'll give you the Mount Rushmore facts. Done. Four facts right off the top. Uh, you can also listen on SoundCloud, Art19. Uh, you can watch the video later today when it's up on YouTube.com slash Nolan. You can listen wherever it is you like to listen to podcasts. It's... Uh, it's almost winter, and so when it's time, it's not close enough to winter, but you can use your leaf blower yeah. to oh, blow blower. leaves and also you pull the pull the thing, thing. if you pull it twice right. A B A B, uh, then it then you hear the garbage time podcast. Plays out of the leaf out of blower. the back. Just hold it right up to your ear. Nothing you ask a will go lot wrong. of questions about yeah. really simple things. That's true. Uh, big thanks to you, though, producer Matt. Thank you, Katie. And your underpants so for sponsoring the podcast. They're, they're grateful to be here. <laughs> we are so grateful to have them here. <laughs> uh, and as always, thanks to you guys for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye. Love you. Mean it.